in this lesson we're going to discuss the basics of swatches if you'd like to follow along go under the file menu to open and in the sample files folder scroll down to 1302-1303 swatches and just click open in the last lesson i mentioned that it's important to create swatches for all the colors you wish to use again and again in a document let me show you one of the reasons why i'm going to select an object and if you don't have your color panel open go under the window menu to color color in the color panel under the options menu i'm going to go to cmyk and hover over the top of the cmyk spectrum and just click to create a color well, the first problem is the color panel is meant for just mixing colors. It doesn't save them in any way. So if I click off of the object I have selected, the color goes away. Let me reselect that object with my selection tool. Another reason why you have to save your colors as swatches is the color will not be available in any pop-up menu in InDesign that's meant for applying colors. It has to be a swatch in order to be in the pop-up menu. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna to switch to my stroke being active just by clicking on it in the color panel. And now I'm gonna to go to my stroke panel. For the type of stroke, I'm gonna apply a dashed stroke. Now, if I wanted to fill in the gaps between the dashes, if I go to my gap color pop-up that bluish color that i just created it's not available here in order to apply a color to the gaps it has to be a swatch or it's not in the pop-up menu that's why adobe gives you lots of ways to save swatches let me just get my stroke panel out of the way and just click on my fill icon to activate my fill again how can I save a color as a swatch? First, I could just go under the options menu of the color panel to add to swatches. Another possibility is to click on the fill and go over the top of my swatches icon. It wasn't even open. It opened the swatches panel to allow me to drop the color right into the swatches panel. And now it's a swatch. Let me just keep undoing all of these different ways to create swatches. So on a Mac, I'm gonna hit Command Z. On a PC, Control Z. I could actually click from any one of the icons because this is the color that is currently active. It's available right within the swatches panel and I can just click and drag it down to an insert point and let go. And now it's a swatch. Let me undo that. I could do the same thing from the tools panel. So just click, drag, and drop. Something you'll find a lot of in InDesign. I'm gonna undo that. I could, of course, do the obvious and click the new swatch icon down the bottom of the swatches panel. And now it's a swatch. Let me undo that. Also, if I wanted to create a new swatch, it's gonna use my currently active color from the color panel if I just go to new color swatch under the options menu of the swatches panel and there it is all I have to do is click OK so Adobe made it really easy to save a color as a swatch why don't we talk about the different kinds of swatches first let's say I need tints of some of my swatches I have my new color selected. If I go to the top of the swatches panel, I can click on the little arrow next to tint and just click on the scrubby slider to make it, let's say, 50%. And if I wanted to apply that color again, let me just select some other object. I'm gonna to have to scroll down in my swatches panel, select my original color, go to my tint scrubby slider and go down to 50% or just type it in. Let me just hit my up arrow to go to 50%, but you can see this can be quite time consuming. That's why you can save any swatch as a tint swatch. All I have to do is go under the options menu of the swatches panel to new tint swatch. And you can see 
all of the information about the swatch itself is grayed out. You can't change it. The only thing I can change is the actual tint percentage. If I want a 50% tint swatch, all I have to do is hit Add. Let me make this panel a little bit bigger. It's going to go to the left side of the panel and pull out, and you can see that now it's the swatch color with a 50% after it. So if I wanted to add this tint to other objects, I don't even have to select the objects. I can just click and drag the swatch directly to the fill and let go. So you can see this is a lot faster than having to make a new tint each and every time. Another kind of a swatch is a gradient swatch. Let me go under the options menu of the swatches panel to new gradient swatch. Creating gradients in InDesign is easy. All you have to do is name it, pick the type of gradient, linear or radial, which is circular. I'm going to stick with linear. And then click on one of the gradient stops underneath the gradient ramp. Right now, the two stops are white and the other stop is black. To change the colors, all I have to do is click on the stop and let me pick a swatch color. So I'm going to go for stop color from the pop-up menu, choose swatches and I'm going to apply cyan. And you can see now I have a cyan to black gradient. Let me click on the other stop and apply a different color. Well, what if I want more than two stops? I could just click anywhere under the ramp, the gradient ramp, and go to my swatches and choose some other color. I can also move these various stops around to totally change the look of the gradient. There's also these little diamond shapes, which represents the center of the blend between the cyan and yellow in this case. So I can skew the center in either direction. So you have a lot of control. Let me go back to 50% here and just hit enter to create my swatch. So you can see how easy that is. We'll learn more about gradients in an upcoming lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to continue discussing swatches.